Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to be discussing Wilhelm Wundt. Um, to kind of jump right into things, this is the guy who was the father of experimental psychology. Um, some of his main goals with experimental psychology were just to explain experience and perception and uh, the methods that we use for perception. Uh, he conducted a lot of his tests based on uh, memory, uh, attention fluctuation, and the range of sensitiveness, which involved uh, emotions and, and behavior. Um, he didn't believe that introspection was a good source of information. And when you, some of you might have already heard that or seen that in the lecture or read that in the book, uh, he believed that the immediate, in order to understand and uh, observe, I guess, or experiment with uh, memory, um, the attention and the the fluctuation and the sensitiveness, it had to you had to get that information immediately. You couldn't base it off of a memory or or trying to recall what it felt like. Um, some of his biggest beliefs were in uh, apperception or voluntarism. That was one of his biggest theories, which is basically just having the choice or controlling what you put your attention to. Uh, he argued for a central control process, which kind of supports that idea of having that choice. And uh, a lot of people kind of have trouble deciding or, or categorizing his stance on the mind-body dualism argument. Um, as far as my understanding goes, I, he is in the mind-body dualism aspect. Um, he believed that you couldn't talk about the, uh, the mind without talking about the body. So uh, he knew there were two separate entities to an extent but that they each kind of interacted with each other. So you can't have one without the other. Um, one of the things that I, I noticed while reading the article was that he, it seems like everybody kind of wanted to categorize him or they would misinterpret his uh, theories or his, his findings and they'd categorize him as something else. Um, so like, a couple of the things they, they mentioned was that they would label him a, an elementalist or an associate, associateist, I think is how you say it, because of how similar his ideas were to those uh, categories. And finally, the biggest part that this article talks about is basically how Wundt's research and his psychological beliefs and ideas and how they're relevant to today. Um, the idea of volition uh, is very similar to the idea of cognitive control, which is, you know, a pretty modern idea. Um, his studies of linguistics are pretty similar to, or the analysis that he made are pretty similar to the ones that are currently being done. Um, one of his students, Kreplin, had a, an idea or a theory of attentional abnormalities for uh, schizophrenia which also uh, reflects the modern attentional theory of schizophrenia. And then there's another one about emotional pairings. And this one was kind of lengthy, kind of a little bit more difficult to understand. But basically, he had this idea of bipolar, or basically polar opposites for each um, dimension of emotions. So... If you were, you had pleasant and unpleasant, so things like that, and they were replicated or are similar to ones that we currently have, which are good and bad, active, passive, strong and weak. So all in all, what, basically what I kind of took from all this is that Wundt was pretty ahead of his time and that he wasn't very well understood back then, but now he it seems to be he seems to be much better understood, I guess, for lack of a better term. But, um, 
and unfortunately he fell off just as quickly as he came into the psychology scene but his uh his findings and his research is is definitely influencing psychology today